Jean. Let's go before the Lord. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, we are here to be refreshed by your Holy Spirit. Minister to us, Lord, this morning. Speak to us, Lord. Give our hearts peace, not just because of our emotion, but rather, Lord, because we can rely on your word, which is true, which is faithful. Lord God, there are many things that are being said in this land, many different types of truths which are false being taught and, and promoted. Lord God, we have gathered together today because we know that your words are true, and we need that so much. Lord God, help us to be the people that you want us to be, the ambassadors of your holy word, of your truthful word, of the word that gives hope to the people of this world. Help our ears, help our minds and hearts to be open to what you have to say to all of us today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, I encourage you all to follow along on the back of the bulletin. The notes are there, and you've got the uh, scriptures. So if you wanted to look back on them anytime this week, they're available for you. We're continuing in the series to, uh, today with the parables of Jesus. And we know that the parable is a story, a simple story, that teaches a spiritual truth. This morning, the parable that we'll be looking at today is this. The parable of the two sons. The parable of the two sons. And what this points to is really the sin of negligence. The sin of ignoring. The sin of negligence. Okay? Let's turn to Matthew chapter 21 to read this parable this morning. I'll be starting with verse 28, going to verse 32. The parable of the two sons. These are the words of Jesus. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Why did Jesus say this? Because many of them were guilty. The people in the righteous group, in the church group, were saying, yes, Lord, we will. But they never did. But the ones who were lost, who heard the gospel and were given the invitation, they quickly received it and they responded. And that's why Jesus said, the ones who are in the world are, going, are getting ahead of you to the kingdom. Verse 32. For John, that's John the Baptist, came to you to show you the way of righteousness. And what does righteous mean? Without sin. Doing what is right. So John the Baptist came to the people to show them the godly way, the holy way to the kingdom of God. And you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes and the tax collectors, even though that was an occupation, 
they were so guilty of corruption and stealing and overcharging, that's why they were labeled like really sinful people, all right? And the prostitutes did. So the people of the world, the people who were lost, the people who are quote-unquote sinners, they responded to the good news when you, who are playing the godly people, did not respond. Did not respond. Your heart was closed. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. The sin of negligence. That's what we're speaking about today. That's the sin of the son who said, yes, Lord, or yes to his father, and did not go and do what his father asked him to do. The other one that said, I don't want to, I'm not going to go, but later convicted, later realizing, you know what, this isn't right. My behavior is not right. I need to change. So that's repentance. And went and listened, that's the one who chose the right way. That's the one who was righteous before God. I have a definition here for you of what negligence means. Negligence. Failure. Failure to take proper care to do something. Negligence is failure. Negligence is failure. God's Holy Spirit talks to our hearts daily. I'd like to read now for you James chapter 4, 17. In James chapter 4, verse 17, the Word of God tells us this. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. We are all given the Ten Commandments. We are all given the instruction, the holy instruction of God, of how to live the righteous life, a godly life, a community of godliness. But God even gives us more than that. He speaks to each one of us according to our talents. And He tells you, and he tells you, and he tells you, and he tells you, and you, and you, go do this. Because he knows how he has equipped each of you. And when you neglect the Holy Spirit of God, when the Holy Spirit of God tells you, because I have equipped you with these talents, these specific things, and you ignore that, for you... That is sin between you and God. You have failed. You have been negligent to listen to God. That's failure. That's sin. Now I'd like to read for you 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18. What kinds of things has God possibly called us to do? Well, in the first verse we read, He has asked you according to your talents to do something for His glory. That some of you do, some of you fail to do. And when I say that, I mean the church as a community, the church overall, the church as a body, globally. They call the church a sleeping giant. The church shouldn't be sleeping. That's negligent. We should be an alert and awake and alive giant of holiness. I'd now like to read for you 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 to show truly the Lord does speak to us and... Some of us listen, 
and some of us don't regarding the matter of prayer. Rejoice always. Are we sour people? Are we moody people? Are we complainers? Well, the Word of God says what? Rejoice. Count your blessing. The idea of being uh, of the cup being half empty or half full is truly the, the, it speaks right about the person. Are we people to be thankful for what we have, or do we complain about what we don't have? The Word of God tells you, as God's people, rejoice always. So whatever you do have, thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. And, it can, and the Word of God continues in verse 17, pray continually. We as God's people, we walk with God. We walk with God daily. We don't leave God at home. We don't leave God at church. Every day, we, His people, walk with the Lord. Right? It's not just Sunday that we're Christians. Whenever we are out and about, we walk with the Lord. I so appreciated Sister Judy this morning when she shared in Sunday school uh, how, you know, when I went out and about walking and enjoying the beautiful nature, you know, I was thinking about heaven and will heaven have these beautiful colored leaves? I believe I said it correctly how you're thinking about it. And there's probably more to that. But she was like, she took God with her on her walk. Amen. Amen. So the Word of God tells us, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. That's not easy. That's not easy. But you know what? We know who God is. And He works all things for good for them who love the Lord. Amen. He doesn't abandon His children. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, has God asked you to do something according to your talents? Has God put it on your heart? Go, spend time with me. Go spend time with me alone. Pray. Has God told you that and you've ignored him? You said, Lord, I don't have time for you. I don't watch this rerun that's on TV. Lord, I don't want to sit and pray right now. I don't want to be quiet with you right now. I, I want to watch the news and who has been repeating the same story all day long. Luke 11, 23. Has God Put it on your heart. Has God asked you to evangelize, to invite someone, to testify? Have you said yes, or have you ignored him? Let's look at the Word of God and see what the Word of God says. Jesus said this to his people. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. We who are believers have a work to help protect the sheep and gather the lost. We all have that responsibility. We all have the responsibility to help feed the sheep, to nurture each other, and especially be compassionate for the lost and help them get the invitation that God loves them. And there's a Savior available for them and that there's hope for the hopeless. Has God put it on your heart to speak to someone, invite someone, give your witness 
Meaning, testify what God did for you and you were shy? Or you said, Lord, no. They don't want to hear. Last week we heard about the parable of the sowers. Of the sower. And the seed went out to all kinds of condition of ground. And that condition of ground talked about the condition of the heart. We only see the face of a person. We can't tell the condition of their heart. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not for me to say that person doesn't want to receive the message. That person is going to say no to me. That person is going to turn me away. I don't know the condition of the person's heart. But if God puts it on my heart to go speak to that person, share with that person, God knows what's waiting inside of their heart. They might need that word. So will I be obedient or not? The choice is mine. Will I be faithful even if I, even if I have to push myself like the first son, first he said, no, I don't want to. Then finally he realized, you know, I need to be faithful and obedient. And he went. That's, he did good. Mm -hmm. But the other son said, okay, I'll do it. And puts it off and puts it off and puts it off. Never does it. You failed to testify, evangelize, and give the word of God. You failed to honor the Lord. When you don't go and do what the Lord prods you to do. The Lord will bring someone else to do it. But you didn't get the blessing that God had for you. <coughs> Has God told you, read my word. Study my teaching. Has God put that on your heart? And you said, Lord, I don't have time right now. Let's look at 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 the Word of God tells us, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. It's not for me to present myself for you. It's for me to present myself for God. We are working to please God. We are, we are working to honor the Lord. We are working for His kingdom. It's for your relationship with Him. The Word of God continues. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. We are called to correctly handle the word of truth. What's the word of truth? The word of God. That means we have to know it. We have to understand it. We have to start growing it. You know, how do you expect to really be a disciple of Jesus and like, you don't even know what he teaches? That's not a disciple. That's not a follower. So we have to be students of the word. You know, very often we look at how hopeless, you know, if we look at the darkness of this world, we say, sure, this world has a lot of hopelessness in it. But I guarantee you, I guarantee all of you, as hopeless as you might think this world is, if you sit five minutes reading the Word of God, you will change your outlook on, God, on this whole day, on your week, on what's going on in the world. Sit with the Word of God. You know why? Because the message of God is hope. The gospel of Jesus is good news for mankind. That's what it is. It's good news for mankind. Read the word of God, and you will see that God is mighty. God could break through barriers that we cannot. 
that God can change all circumstances. Whatever your outlook is, if it might be dark and bleak, if you spend time in the Word of God, your outlook will change right away. Because there's hope in the teachings of God's Word. And it's not just emotional hope. It's hope based on truth and reality. Has God told you to study His Word and you keep putting it off? I challenge you this year, if you've never fully read the Word of God, read it. And it might feel overwhelming right now. You might feel like there's so much you don't know about it. Read a little bit every day. A little bit every day adds up, and within a whole year, you'll easily accomplish it. If every day you read one chapter, two chapters, and if you have questions, write the questions down on a notepad. Keep a journal. Write all your questions down. You're welcome to call me anytime you want. Anytime. I'll help you understand and make sense of that question you might have. And there is a Bible study Sunday morning for the adults. You can come to that. There's a Bible study Wednesday night. You can come to that. And if anyone needs a Bible study on another night or day, we'll make another Bible study. It'll be my joy to do it. Has God told you to make peace with someone? My friends, we don't know if we have tomorrow. Has God put it on your heart? Has God prodded you? My son, my daughter, go make peace with this person. Go make peace with this person. And what did you do? Ignore him? Ignore him? If God tells you to do something, if God puts it on your heart and mind, now, go, do it. Don't neglect God. Don't neglect what God prods you to do. God knows what the future holds. We don't. But if God prods you to go do something, now, do it. Take it serious. Let's look at Matthew 5.25. Jesus said this, Settle matters quickly with your adversary, with someone that you're having a conflict with, with someone that you feel has done you wrong or you've done wrong. Settle matters quickly who is with your adversary who is taking you to court. Meaning, that person, they had enough of you, you had enough of them, and there's a, a battle, and they want to complain about you, you want to complain about them. So Jesus, Jesus is saying, go make peace with that person. Now, <clears throat> let me continue. Do it while you are still together on the way. Jesus took a spiritual matter, put it in a, a way we can understand physically, you know, in this realm. He's saying, look, if you have a problem with a person, while you're on the way to the courthouse, try to work it out before you get there. Let me continue. Or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison. You know what that is? That's a spiritual lesson. Understand it this way now. Settle matters quickly with the person you're having a conflict with who is complaining about you and you're complaining about. Do it while you're in this world. While you're living near that person, while you're walking in this world together. 
Because one day that person might, might, might really make this complaint before God about you. About your unforgiving heart and how you've done them wrong. And who's the judge? The Lord Almighty. And the judge may truly side with that person and see you as the unfaithful son, see you as the unfaithful daughter, and do what? Hand you over to the officer. And who's the officer? That's the angel who's going to uh, throw the goats into hell. This is a spiritual lesson. We are called, while we're in this world, while we have time, to walk in peace with all people. It's not easy. It's not easy. But you know, God gives us strength to walk in peace. God gives us strength to forgive. And you know, God gives us the ability to be bold and to try to make peace with a person. Not all people want to have peace with you. You can't force them to walk in peace with you. You can't force them to forgive you. You can't force them to be a nice person. But at least do what you're supposed to do. Right? Put out an olive branch. Make an effort of peace. If they accept it, you've won a friend. And if they've rejected you, you know that's between them and God now. You've done right by God. That's what it comes down to. You do right by God. If they don't want to do right by God, that's between them and God. You do right by God. Do you understand what the whole message is about today? When the father told the two sons to go do this, he gave both of them the same instruction. The one responded yes, never did. The one responded no, but finally grudgingly did the right thing. What will you do? Will you do right by God? Or will you ignore God? Will you put on a smile and say, God, I'm going to do it? And you just keep putting it off, ignoring God? Do you really think in the end God's not going to hold you accountable or me accountable? For sure he will. For sure he will. But because he's loving, but, and because he's kind, he's patient with us. He's not ignorant. He's not dull. He's not mindless. He's patient because he's loving. And the Word of God says that he doesn't even want the wicked to perish. That's why he's patient. He's slow, slow to punish in hope that we will change. In hope that we will change. Has God told you to make peace with someone? If you reject to make peace, and if you cling to unforgiveness, God will not forgive your sins. Those are the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus. Jesus said, If you do not forgive your brother, for what he has done to you, your heavenly Father will not forgive what you have done. Watch out. That's a warning for us. And I tell you something. If you forgive, you will feel so good. You will let that monkey off your back. You will get that burden off your head. Hatred will kill you. Hatred, <coughs> hatred will eat you up. Hatred is a poison. And when I say hatred, unforgiveness is a form of hatred. Closing. As simple as I could say it, today is the day to do right by God and by your brother and your sister. Today is the day. Today is the day to do right by God. Listen to Him. Do right by your brother. Do right by your sister. If God said go talk to that person, share your testimony, share good news, 
share an invitation, forgive that person, do it. Do it now. We aren't promised tomorrow. We have people all the time stepping into eternity. We have people young, young, stepping into eternity. We have people so healthy stepping into eternity. I tell you, God, God wants your life to be great. If you listen to Him, if you listen to Him, your life will be abundant. Jesus said, I have come to bring you an abundant life, to teach you the way. But if you want to do things your way, you will not live the abundant life. But if you humble yourself and do things the way Jesus has taught us to do it, you will live the abundant life. Amen. Amen. Let's go before the Lord. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, truly we love you. And we know, Lord God, that your way is truly the right way. Your way is the way of life. Your way is the way of heaven. Your way is the way of peace. Your way brings us joy. Thank you, Lord God, for your holy perfect and complete word, we pray, Lord, that we will be attentive to your leaning, to your leading. Lord, when you knock on our hearts, help us to respond. Lord God, when you tell us what to do, help our ears to be able to decipher. These are your words coming to us, and you want us to respond. Help us, Lord, to be diligent and faithful and help us to take it uh, in a very serious way. Lord God, let us not be negligent. Let us not be people who will fail you, but rather, Lord, let us be pleasing to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.